So this is what we call snow here in Utah. And this is a 2007 Toyota Camry. And today we're gonna be installing heated seats in the driver and passenger. And it's actually a lot easier than you might think. I'll leave a link for all of this stuff that we use in this video, the heated seats and all the tools down in the video description. Let's get started. So the first step in getting the heated seats installed is taking out the driver and passenger seat. This just gives us easier access to work with the foam underneath the seat cover. Now most seats in most cars, because these instructions will work for a lot of vehicles, I've done this in a truck and a car before, most seats in most cars have four bolts mounting them into the frame of the vehicle. So we've already removed those four bolts, pretty straightforward, and now we'll just pull the seat out from the car. All right, and these are those four bolts I was talking about earlier. They just go straight into the frame on each side of those. This had some little plastic pieces covering the bolt holes, but not too hard. There was also a little wiring harness for the motor because this seat goes back and forth on a motor. So every seat cover is going to come off a little bit differently. This has a little metal ring, kind of like a key ring, that's pinched around another metal bar underneath this. So we'll open this up, slide the bar out, and then the seat cover itself should come apart. So since this seat is being rather difficult and we don't want to disassemble the whole thing, we have just enough opened that I think we can slide this all the way up inside. Now this does have adhesive strips, but I'm hoping to get it all up underneath this back cover without getting it all wrinkled up and stuff. And then we can just pull down the adhesive strip once it's inside and tack it down onto the foam. All right, so right now my hand is up underneath the heated seat cover and I'm pulling out that adhesive strip from the back side of the pad. And that's what's gonna keep it pressed up against the foam all the way down. So the tactic did work. We were able to leave the seat cover intact. And now that white thing you saw earlier is gonna keep the back warm here. So now we have to put another white thing down here at the bottom for the glutamus maximus, and uh, then we'll wire it up. Now that we're working on the seat, it's a lot tighter than the top was. So we're actually using this tripod leg <laughs> and ramming it pretty deep down inside of there so that it's not crinkled up on the seat and it's all laying flat. All right, so this is the wiring harness that comes with the heated seats. The part that goes into the white panels that we are just installing against the foam in the seat plug into here. So there's two of them, one for the back and one for the bottom. And then over here we have a relay and that goes up this strand into the switch. And we'll show you how to install the switch in a second, but basically you have your high power and your low power and then just office here in the center. This is where things start to get a little more complicated. We have a black wire, which is ground, and then we have a red wire with a fuse in it. I'll have a buddy show you how to install this in just a second. Okay, so Braxton has adjusted the ends of the wires just a little bit. So tell me what's going on here. So we have a fuse tap right here. This car actually has a spot for seat heaters. If it didn't have a fuse position for the seat heaters, we'd actually would just use like a cigarette outlet or something like that. But because it already has that fuse, we're just gonna use an add a fuse. It's gonna connect to the power wire. We're gonna use a 10 amp fuse to keep that safe. And then we have this little eyelet down on the negative side. And we're gonna connect that into one of these bolts up here and that will be our ground. And the rest of the wiring will run through the dash and then we'll have our switch just right here on the side and that will turn the seat heater on and off. Then these backup two that plug into the seat will just run underneath this and then where the seat bolts in here, that'll all be hidden underneath. So the car, the only physical difference will be a switch right here on the side that we drill into this plastic. So what we're gonna do with this out of circuit is run it underneath where the dash would be and then that's gonna just plug right back into where it was, just like that. And that's where it'll draw power from. And to complete the circuit, we'll take the ground, which we've added that little eyelet onto and bolt it into the frame. In order to get a good ground and complete the circuit, it can't be on a painted surface. So if there is paint between like the bolt and the frame where you're trying to ground your circuit, make sure you scrape it off where it's touching the metal. That way, if there isn't a good ground, your seat heaters aren't gonna get as hot as they could be because there's not enough electricity flowing through the whole unit. All right, so we're drawing power from up here, and then we have the ground over there tapped right into the frame. And so when we take this little switch right here, it's off right now. Now it's on and on low. Sweet, let's plug it in and see if it works. 
So we changed our minds a little bit about where to mount this uh, switch at. And so what we're gonna do is this piece just clips into the dash and so it's easily replaceable. So I scraped a little pilot hole into it with a razor. We're gonna drill a hole into it so this plug will fit through the hole. So we need to get this connector through the hole right there. And this hole with the half inch wood bit that we used isn't gonna be quite big enough. So we're just gonna use a razor blade. We're gonna widen that hole just big enough to where this connector can get through and the switch can get through, just up to that point. Now we have the hole big enough, we're gonna go ahead and slide the plug through and clip the button into place. So we have the switch that's going from right there, runs down through there, underneath the dash, and into the carpet area right there, and then it runs along this panel Let's out right there, and that's where the seats will mount back in, and then it'll clip into the connectors. So the only thing we have left to do is grab the seat, put it in, get the four bolts in, and it should be good to go. We'll find out. Okay, so the seat is mounted back in. One thing that we made sure to do was route the wiring down here so that it wasn't gonna get caught in the track of the seat when it was moving forward and backward. If you need to use zip ties on yours, do that, but if you can find a way to route it so that it's not gonna get in the way of the track, that's gonna be preferred. Okay, so when the car is on now, or at least like, you know, the accessories are on, over here we have the button, and so we can turn it all the way up, off, or if we go down, then the light turns green, if you can see it right there. I do feel like that these seat heaters take a little bit longer to heat up, maybe between three and five minutes. My buddy Braxton has these same seat heaters in his truck, and how long would you say it takes for them to turn on for you? I would say about that, about three to five minutes. So if you're out in the snow or whatever, turning your car on, letting your windshield defrost or whatever, they should turn on after that. I'll keep the video description updated on whether or not these work. Obviously, we just barely installed these. Look for that. I'll also have like all the parts and stuff linked there as well. Braxton, my boy, he, we've been friends for like probably three or four years now. At least. And he's been doing some pretty sweet stuff with his truck. He put a wireless car charger in his dash so he can just set his phone, his iPhone, or if he has a, you know, Android is a little bit better than the iPhone are. <laughs> but he can just set his phone on his dash. I'll link that video right, right here. I'll link that video <laughs> right here if you want to go check that out and take a look at his channel for some more cool projects. It's pretty awesome. Thanks, Tom, for watching, and we'll see you around.